for more on the situation in Syria, we are joined live right now by my colleague Daniela Pagani. He joins us from Erbil in Iraq. Daniela, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the Islamic State has lost control of some very important oil fields in the south of Mosul. Has this hit them hard? Really speaking, how important is oil for both Iraq as well as the IS? Good afternoon, Aisha. Yes, well, uh, they have lost all the, the oil drilling fields on the southern part of the city of Mosul in an area called Kayara. We are speaking about a massive oil extraction process. Uh, how important is oil for Iraq and for Islamic State? Well, for Islamic State, oil is their long-run disposable income resource. Through selling it to whatever the acquirement is, they can gather money, a lot of money, through which they can pay soldiers and they can buy ammunition and they can buy bombs and they can buy all the materials they need to control the cities. How important is it for Iraq? It's very important. Let's uh, consider that in Iraq, the 95% of the GDP is connected to oil. It's production, it's processing, and it's sell, both on the private and on the public enterprise side. So reconquering all these uh, drilling fields has been a very, very, very good hit by the, Iraqi, by the Iraqi army and a very, very dramatic blow for ISIS, who is now left without any single oil drilling machine in the area. Right, Daniela, you mentioned that when uh, they were defeated, the IS burned all the oil drilling plants in the south of Mosul. But some of those are still burning, as you pointed out. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, this is normally their strategy, okay? Whenever they are defeated and they retreat, they do not want to leave these plants in the hands of the Iraqi government or the Syrian forces, if it is the matter of Syria. So what they do, they start burning the oils and then they put concrete on the security valves. So when this concrete is put on the security valves, it is impossible to close the valves and stop the oil burning. We are speaking about oil burning since the last two months because Kayara has been finally secured and liberated by the end of August, mid-August, end of August. So it is a lot of oil going completely lost and probably it's impossible also to stop this oil burning and there is no strategy forward for this. So it is a big, big loss. Right. So we've talked a little bit about uh, Iraq and the IS's dependency on oil, but really how important is oil even for Kurdistan? Well, for Kurdistan, oil is very important. Uh, let's understand that Kurdistan, it is in the northern part of Iraq. And recently, enormous amount of oil fields have been discovered in Kurdistan. And Kurdistan started drilling this oil. There is currently a dispute between Baghdad and the autonomous government of Kurdistan about this oil because Kurdistan is drilling the oil, is selling it, and apparently is not sending the money back to Baghdad, who decided to cut their budget off. And these affect also the daily life of the people because everyone here is dependent on oil. Erbil and Iraqi Kurdistan is a place where there was a huge economic boom in 2010 and 11 and 12. And this stopped completely because Daesh came and took possession of all the oil drillings. And the nowadays life is slow. Here is pretty normal. I mean, today I have been walking through the markets and through the areas of the city. And uh, let's uh, have a look together at what I have seen today. This behind my shoulder is the main square of the city of Erbil, the capital city of the Iraqi state of Kurdistan. As we can see, life flows pretty peacefully even though Daesh is only 62 kilometers from here. People are walking through the bazaar and buying goods for the everyday life in the square. And they are enjoying their life in the many small cafes, like the one we can see just right here behind my shoulder. Now it's full daytime, so it's pretty hot and no one is sitting here. Let's walk and let's take a walk around. I would say this is really an everyday market nothing special in it. It really seems impossible that Daesh is so close here and that these people, many families, have probably one member fighting in the front line or even one loss within the family ranks.
Now we are in the new part of the city, we are not anymore in the city centre. And this is one of the many big roads which is crossing the city of Erbil. As we can see, the status of infrastructure is pretty good. The city and the region of Kurdistan was enjoying, before the arrival of Daesh, a big and good moment of economic boom that now has arrested. And everybody, the businessman, the shopkeeper, whoever we have been talking with at Leon, is telling us that now economy is very slow and they are finding really, really hard to manage their home economy in their day-by-day -day life. As we can see also here, life flows pretty normally. There is no military presence in the majority of the city. There is no military presence on the streets of the city, or at least it is not consistent. Many of them are, of course, gather on the line front so they are not patrolling the streets of the city. Right, Daniela, as per that report, uh, we can show our viewers, as you have indicated, that life, really speaking, in Erbil, which is the uh, capital of Iraqi Kurdistan, seems pretty normal, but that struggle for independence and autonomy is still on. Let's connect that back to this discussion that we were having on oil. If, if Kurdistan is able to quit Iraq, what does that mean for oil fields in the region? Hello. So let's, let's, let's speak about this a little bit more. So the problem is that Iraqi Kurdistan right now enjoys a state of, of an autonomous province, even though the agreement has not been, been settled. So if Kurdistan leaves Iraq, and this is one of the many possibilities uh, after the war ends, uh, for Iraq is going to be a big problem because uh, the oil fields presence in this area are very rich and very big and have just recently been discovered and started drilling, which means it is an enormous amount of oil that uh, Baghdad will not be able to use anymore in case Kurdistan gain independence. And this independence struggle of the Iraqi Kurdistan is one of the many conflicts that could happen after ISIS is liberated. The situation here is, uh, is, is a bit complicated because for the moment all the actors uh, do have a common enemy, which is the Islamic State. But after this, uh, it is not sure what will happen. Iraqi Kurdistan wants, of course, to secure its independence. Kurds in Kurdistan, in Syria, in Iran, and in Turkey have been fighting for an independent state for at least 300 years, and for with three decades of uh, insurgency within Turkey. And uh, they are not willing to get back to the old form of Iraq and ruled by Baghdad. So it is a big problem, but Baghdad cannot afford to lose all the oil present in this area, in the northern mountains and in the area of Tikrit, which is, western, which is a western city close to Mosul. And it's now currently controlled of Peshmerga, which are the Kurdish arm, because they have liberated it. So the dispute is ongoing, and it is most likely one of the many conflicts that will start after the liberation, if the liberation of Mosul happens. All right, Daniela, thank you so much for joining us with that report and those updates from Erbil in Iraq. Once again, we ask you to take care of yourself and stay safe. Continue those reports for us. We look forward to speaking with you again very soon.